Andy's fishing and wild cook. Hey everyone, you're watching Andy's Fishing a Wild Cook. You're probably wondering what I'm doing in the forest on a food chain challenge. Well, I chose this spot to do my food chain challenge. What I'm doing in my videos now is camping overnight and seeing what foods I can forage along the way. I reckon we'll find some on this journey down to the river. Join me and we'll see what we can find. Check out these fruit on the ground here. Look how red they are. Red's often a warning colour, but I think in this case, these ones might be okay to eat. I'll grab a couple. Here you go. Look at that. Better. I'm going to try and identify these. They look a little bit like a lily pilly, but I'm not 100% sure. And if you're not 100% sure, you don't eat it. Okay, this is the tree that they're coming off of. Let's see if I can get a closer look at the berries and the, the structure. And whoops, oh, there they all come down. So I've just picked up one little berries off the ground. It looks to me like a lily pilly. I'm not 100% certain. So I'm going to give a little nibble and see what it's like. Mmm, quite. It's like it's got vitamin C in it or something like, um, yeah, like acidic y, astringent y sort of taste. Quite, quite a lot of moisture in there. Now because I don't know what it is, I'm not going to eat, whoops, I'm not going to eat that. I do have a book with me, but it doesn't have this particular species. Very distinctive on the, on the back there. So that little taste is all I'm going to do. Leave this behind and uh, see what else we can find. I'm in a little bit of a gully now. And I walk past this stuff every time I go into the jungle. Once again, it's not in the book, but I think this could be scurvy weed. I've been researching all the different books. Because I'm traveling light, I've only got one book with me. I've, at home, I've got probably five, six, seven even. Um, probably another one coming. So apparently you can eat the leaves and the, sh the, like the central shoot of this. But until I'm 100% certain, I'm going to let it go. Hang on. Quite bitter. Not offensive, not like, you know, crazy, crazy bad. But I think you probably have to cook this to eat it anyway. That's the stem. I think, I think the stem. Mm, quite bitter. Not super bitter, but... I don't want to eat it like that. Anyway, interesting. Here we have Dianella or the flax lily. This is the leaves here. And that's the fruit. There you go. I'm going to eat that actually. No, I'm not going to eat that. It's got something in it. I'll find another one. There we go. I don't recommend you eat any little purple berries that you find in the bush. I've eaten Dianella before. Mmm. I generally spit the seeds out. It's like a really, really sweet carroty taste. Mmm. Mmm. Quite nice, actually. I pretty much always spit the seeds out because the fruit's the tasty bit and the seeds can be toxic or unpalatable. That's the way the plant distributes its offspring around the forest. You can tell it's the end of the dry season because the river's not really flowing. It's got a slight trickle happening to it, but there's a lot of this weed growing in the river. And as far as I know, all these weeds here, all the freshwater weeds, um, they're actually toxic to humans, so we're not going to eat any of that, not even going to try that. Just thought I'd stop by this uh, little puddle here and have a little, little splash. It's actually really hot. Ah. It's uh, probably, I think, 32 degrees Celsius at the moment. Quite high humidity. 
and yeah, bashing through the jungle is, is always hard work. But yeah, there's definitely enough water here, and I reckon the food chain challenge is on. I'll show you the hooks later, but I'm going to start with a teeny weeny one. I like to do things different to everybody else. So the first thing I'm going to do is use myself as bait. <laughs> You'll have to see what I mean about that, but it should work. Anyway, let's keep moving. I was just about to get moving again, and wherever you look, if you know what to, to look for, there is food. Have a look at this. This is gotchi cola. I have shown this in a number of videos. It's very bitter, and it kind of tastes like really bitter carrot. Mmm. They say five or six leaves of this is really good for your blood if you have them every day. I don't come here every day. But... While I'm here, I may as well do something good for my body. <laughs> mm. It's good to be back in the jungle. While the river looks stagnant in most of the big pools, you can see here, it's actually flowing at a reasonable speed. There you go. So I'll be quite happy to drink that water. I've been noticing these little green figs on a lot of these figs in the middle of the river. And let's have a look here, look at this. That looks like a ripe one there. See that brown one? Let's give it a shot. There it is there. It's um, yeah, sort of greeny brown, a little bit of red on it. I always like to give them a little squish to see what's, what's going on inside. Oh, it's actually got like a, a clear jelly I'm going to say this one's going to taste nice and sweet. Mmm. Oh. Mm. It has the same flavour as the, the big black figs you get in the supermarket. Mmm. That is just divine. There's a couple more on here, but I can imagine... Yeah, these are, these are a bit too far gone. I can imagine the, the birds would get into these really early in the morning. Mm. Mm. It is it is very nice, these wild figs. Mm. Yummy. Mm. Oh, I'm having a good time today. I'm finding all sorts of... I know a lot of you are wondering about all the snakes in Australia. I've seen three already today. <laughs> Two tree snakes and a red belly black snake. So I just try and walk so that they don't, um, so I don't step on them, don't, don't corner them, and hopefully they'll stay away from me. And later tonight at the campfire, I'll give you guys an update on the survey and the potential trips coming up. It's very exciting and good news, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, I am particularly excited. We're getting deeper in the jungle, you can tell because there's less light and the trees are getting bigger. So I reckon the next big water hole I find, um, we'll um, set up camp there and then we'll start fishing. Okay, this here looks like my spot. Got a nice clearing here in the forest floor and if you have a look through here, we've got a nice little pool of water. Look at that. Nice and deep. So before I set up camp, I'm going to get the first link in the food chain. Well, actually, I'm the first link in the food chain. I'm going to get the second link, hopefully. Uh, I'm really hot, so I'm just going to jump in the water. And that's how I'll get my first or second link. Okay, I actually see some ducks out there. As soon as I jump out, they'll, they'll take off. Hello, ducks. Oh, there they go. Oh. What a nice, nice size. Actually, there's oh, two, four, six, eight. Oh, probably almost a dozen ducks there. That's cool. So this section of the river looks like it could have crocodiles in it. It's um, got a lot of weed. The water's not 100% clear. So I'm just going to go up this way a little bit and see if I can find a, a shallow spot where I feel safe. This actually looks good here. It's 
So what the shrimp are doing is they're eating my dead skin particles and I can feel one already. Yep, he's right. Oh, I've got two or three. <laughs> this hopefully won't take too long. I yeah, got one. Yep, there he is. Look at him. Oh, <laughs> he almost got away. All right, first one in the bag. There he is. Bought a little plastic container, especially for this, to show you guys. That's a little shrimp or freshwater prawn. But yep, we've got one link in the food chain. I'll get a couple more of these guys, and then we'll try for link oh, number three. I managed to catch a few more, but they're very, very small. So, well, and a little fish. So we'll, we'll use whatever we have for bait. But before we go fishing, I'm going to set up camp. So it could get dark. I want to try and get fish before it gets dark, but fishing's fishing. Anyway, I'll go set up the hammock. So every time I do these trips, I think of what can I get that's a bit lighter, more compact. And this trip, it's a little inflatable pillow. <laughs> Let's see how this inflatable pillow works. It can't be any worse than my shirt and shorts from last episode. So I'll just show you quickly inside. I'll put the pillow up that end. Just got my ground mat, uh, sleeping bag liner. Now we're going to have to try and catch a fish because it's probably... Ooh, I'm going to say it's about 4.30 in the afternoon. Just looking at where the sun is. So we've got our little shrimp. And we'll get hopefully a little fish about this big. And then we'll go for something bigger after that. But first we need a small fish. So guys, I just wanted to show you the size of hooks that I'll be using. It's probably a little bit hard to see that little size 22 on the end of my finger. It's um, the smallest hook that I own. And that's probably a like an 8.0 hook there. So I better tie that little one on before it gets too dark. <laughs> the only rod I've brought on this trip is a Tenkara pole or fishing rod and it's got this really fine tip and a little bit of material tied on the end. So what I'm going to do is tie some fluorocarbon. This is only 1.8 kilos. I've got about two and a bit meters there. A slip knot and tie it onto that and just cinch it down right there. There we go. And then this extends out oh, about two and a bit meters. And uh, that is my fishing setup. So we're only after a little fish about that big. That's that's what we're hoping for. I've tied on the size 22 hook. For those of you that missed it before, that's it there. It is, it is tiny. It's like about five mil, maybe six millimeters long. I have no idea how they make those things. Here's the thing. I didn't realize how hard it's gonna be to get one of these guys on the hook. So I'm just pouring the water into my hat. Hope I don't lose them all. Look at that. That is very small little shrimp. We're going to try and rig him up live. Oh, I've never done this sort of thing before. It is tiny. Look at, look at the size of this thing. Just through his back there. Hopefully I can get it in. Okay. We have a minuscule live shrimp. <laughs> Alright, let's get that guy in the water as quickly as possible. Okay, I've moved over to the weeds again because this is where the small fish live. 
in the weeds. Oh, yeah, we've got something going on. Oh, missed him. Oh, look at that. I just got my bait taken. Okay, it's on. I was a little bit worried about this, but yeah, that, that bait got taken. All right, we're going to get a little fish very shortly. Okay, let's try again. That That is like the smallest live bait I've ever used. All right, it's in the hole. Yep, and we've got fish. Ooh, we didn't get it. These guys might even be too small for this. Oh, and they've got my bait again. Oh, I might have to find a hole with some bigger fish in it. Oh, no. I'm going to run out of bait. Oh, I got one. Oh, I got a little fish. Look at him. I think that's a rainbow fish. Let's get him off. Cool. We've got our next step. I've just shifted spots here. There's a slightly bigger bunch of fish here. Let's see what we can get. Oh, go on. <laughs> that definitely worked. Oh, he's, he's a good size actually for live bait. Probably three inches. Yeah. Cool. Put him in our little box. Oh, he might even catch our dinner. The shrimp are good bait, but they're very soft and they keep coming off. I've got the little fish. I'm just going to use about half of that. Yummy. And hopefully that'll be a little tougher and we'll get a good size. Oh, there's a nice little butterfly. There he is. Actually, it looks like a moth. So yeah, hopefully that's a bit tougher and the bait just keeps falling off. So we should be able to get a couple more um, little bait fish. Let's see if this works a bit better. It's in the spot. Got another one. Oh, yes. Oh, that is perfect. We've now got three of these. I might get one more and then we'll start fishing live bait. Getting a little cramped in there. Hey, look at them all. <laughs> we have some bait. I think we'll get one more little bait fish and that should do us. Right in the middle and they're on it. Got him, yes. <laughs> oh, size 22 little trout fly hook. Look at that guy. That is cool. There they are. My bait fish. So this is actually pretty cool. I've never tried to catch little fish like that before and to get it, you know, with a with something I caught with my bare hands. It's wild. So now I'm just putting on a um, live bait hook. This isn't the biggest one I've got. This is this is the next step up. It's probably about a size one o. It's um, this is going to be a bit longer step I reckon. The um, the predators probably come out well, soon. The sun's just about to set. I've got. 30 pound and it's just just a hand line just literally just just string nylon string so you don't need a lot to catch fish let's put the hook through the back of this rainbow fish careful not to hit the spine Ooh, they're actually quite a tough little critter there we go ready to go -hoo. now I do think this can take a while we'll fish right here in front of these this grass. There we go. And then we just, yeah, sit and wait. Just felt a bit of a nibble. Let's have a look and see what's going on. Oh, looks like the fish is dead. And something has been eating his head. So I think that might be, um, yeah, like a yabby or a crayfish. Let's get rid of him. We'll keep him, but we'll get another live bait on. And I've got a piece of foam. We'll make it a float. That's that's a much better idea. Okay, got a nice little yellow float. And let's see what happens this time. There we go. That way we can watch the float as well. Okay, we've got something going on. That float's gone under. Oh, it's just popped back up. Hopefully it's not gone. You know, it's still on there. Something Something's got that float. Oh, dropped it, whatever it was. Oh, man. Let's put another one on. We've still got a bit of daylight. Oh, something had it. That's actually our last live fish. One died, one's got eaten. And, well, actually the small one, he died as well. So, this is our last live fish right on dark. Come on, buddy. Do me proud. Okay. Perfect. It's out there. It's pretty dark now. The sun's definitely set. 
while I got you here, a lot of people ask me to give them rods and lures and fishing gear. Now I'm not actually sponsored by any rod or reel companies, so I don't have lots of rods and reels to give away. If you want to get into fishing, that little Tenkara rod that I got, it's like, I think you can get them for $15 on eBay Australian, so that's like maybe maybe $10 US. And I'll just make a fire right down on the river rocks here. I will tell you about the Trover trip and all the people that filled out the survey. It's, um, yeah, I'm very excited and it's looking like there's definitely going to be a trip happening. I'm wishing I had brought my fishing rod with some lures because the fish are just going off out here. You can hear them splashing and jumping everywhere. Anyway, I get these ideas in my head. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'll do this, I'll do this. And then, yeah, it's a challenge sometimes. I usually get it done. Something about fire, water and mountains. I don't know, it's just, I, I guess it's a primal thing. Now's a good time to talk about the survey results. So if you haven't filled out the survey yet, there's still plenty of time. It's, it's I think it's always gonna be there. Go and fill it out. So, oh, my line's gone off. I gotta go, I gotta go. Oh, where is it, where is it? I'm not wearing my glasses, I can't see. Oh, the line's here somewhere. Oh no, where is it going? Here it is, here it is. We've got something on there, yes. Ooh. Oh, it could be an eel. It feels like an eel. Let's hope it's an eel. Oh, Ooh, it's got a bit of pull on it. Oh, It could be a fish, I don't know. What have we got? Oh, we've, yep, we've got an eel. Oh, he's a good size. Check this guy out. Oh. Oh, I just broke it. I just broke it. Oh, the line just broke. Oh, <coughs> oh the bugs are killing me here. Hang on a minute. I'll go back to the fire. Oh, man, those bugs just moved in. As soon as I got that light going, the bugs just whoosh, straight onto me. Damn, that was a good size eel. That was exactly what I wanted. That almost finished my challenge. Um, well, I mean, I caught it and I had it right out of the water and then the line broke, so. I've got a fish there. I'm gonna put on half a fish and try that again. So hopefully we'll get another eel. I was hoping for a mangrove jack before it got dark or just after it got dark, but now it's eel time. So I reckon we'll get another one. Damn it, <laughs> damn it. Oh, I, I love smoked eel or you know cooked on a fire the way I do it. Hopefully, hopefully I can get one for tomorrow morning. I've got no idea where I was at. <laughs> anyway, we'll go back to the survey. So far, 528 people have filled the survey out and you guys are honoring me. It's, um, yeah, I didn't, I never thought there'd be that many people that'd be keen to, to fish with me. So there will be trips organized. Uh, not quite sure when the first one is. Those people who filled out the survey, you guys are first in line. So other people that, when I put the notification out that see, oh, I like that destination and then fill the survey out, you'll be in second place. People who've already filled the survey out and you can fill it out right now, no nothing's been sent out. If you're still keen, fill the survey out and you'll be in like first position. The trips we'll be doing are organized by Trova Trip. They're guided by other companies. Now I have guided before. I know what it's all about but I won't be guiding. I'll be fishing with you. And my idea for these trips, and I've, I've wanted to do something like this since I've, oh, I don't know, there's two prerequisites for where these destinations are gonna be. One, it's gotta be a dream destination. And two, the first time I go, it has to put me slightly out of my comfort zone. That's a sign of a really cool trip. Now, I'll go to places where I've already been and it, I'm totally in my comfort zone. But if it's a new place, I like to have that little tingle of expectation. Like when you jump on the plane, it's like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to expect. I don't know what it's going to be quite like. And I hope you guys ex experience that on these trips. So as of now, there's no set destinations. The destinations will be where enough people want to go 
and we can make it happen. So, so far, Australia is number one. New Zealand's up there. I think Fiji, there's, there's, I can't remember the exact statistics. I haven't actually seen the full statistics yet. I've only just seen the brief outline. But I am extremely excited about this. These trips, hopefully, are going to be happening probably next year sometime. Well, definitely not this year. It's December almost. So fill the survey out if you haven't. If you have, sit tight. There'll be an email maybe this month, maybe next month. The, the, the ball's rolling and we're going to have some adventures together. No fire story tonight. I'm still hoping that line goes off again. So tonight's backup plan is pork ribs in plum sauce. Now that rock's been on there for almost an hour. Sizzle, sizzle. Sounding good. And we'll save a couple for breakfast. Okay, the line's gone off again. I can see it moving. Here it is. Okay, what do we got? Where is it? Oh, it's definitely something. Yep, yep. Oh, feels like an eel. Oh, this one's smaller. Let's get this one up. Ooh, ooh. A bit feisty. He's definitely a bit smaller. Oh, he's jumping everywhere. Come on. Okay, there we go. Oh, this is actually a perfect size. Let's get him away from the water. Look at that. We got an eel. All right, we're going to have eel for breakfast. Over the years, I've figured out the best way to dispatch an eel. They're a bit of a hard thing to deal with because they, they tie themselves in knots and they're extremely strong and quite slimy usually. We'll subdue him a little bit and then get him right in the back of the neck. <coughs> Cut his spine. There we go. Oh, he will not be going anywhere now. Yeah, this is the perfect size. He is about 80 centimeters long. And any bigger than this, they take really long to cook and they're just too much meat. And if they're too much smaller than this, there's not much meat on them. We've completed the food chain challenge. We started off with me as bait, the shrimp for little fish, then the little fish for an eel. And tomorrow morning, we'll cook him up. Must be time to turn the pork. Yeah, actually that big one looks, looks really nicely done. Now I saw a bit of lightning over the ridge there and when I left this morning there was no rain forecast for five days. <laughs> it always seems to be that when I go camping it gets rained. The pork's just about ready to eat and I'm looking forward to it. Long days out here. It's 8.30 at night already. Well, I'm tucked away in the hammock. It was a really successful day today. I was, yeah, quite surprised how easy I was able to catch the rainbow fish. I'm uh, also interested to see how this pillow goes. It's only 55 grams and it wasn't that expensive, so hopefully I found something good. Hope it doesn't rain. It's, yeah, it's very pleasant temperature. Don't need a sleeping bag. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the morning. some animals outside I think they're pigs I'm hoping they're pigs they could be dingoes or wild dogs too they're very quiet they just they just make a noise every now and then anyway I think I'm safe and twice there's been a bit of rain I can hear it up in the canopy but it, it doesn't reach the forest floor which is really odd so it's really light rain and there's something splashing around the water too. I think it's pigs digging around in the shallows. Anyway, like I said, no idea what time it is. I'm going to try and go back to bed. 
fingers crossed I'm still not going to get wet tonight. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning everyone, I survived another night, don't know what those animals were, they um, disappeared, it's probably just before 5 in the morning, bird song once again was amazing, and it sprinkled again just before as well, so that was probably about 5 minutes ago, just, just the slightest little drops of rain, but nothing to worry about yet. And here's, here's something really cool. Some Sometime late last night, I solved a theoretical riddle. I heard a tree fall in the forest about 100, 200 metres away. The theological riddle is, if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, does it make a sound? I was over here, the tree was over there. It made a sound. <laughs> Trees make a sound whether we are there or not. The world does not revolve around humans, despite what we think. Anyway, I'm going to get up shortly. Oh, and I better tell you about the pillow. I quite like the little inflatable pillow. It's, um, yeah, it's so compact and very light. It's, uh, yeah, I've let a little bit of air out it last night because it was a little bit hard. But uh, yeah, compared to not having a pillow, it's great. Anyway, I'm going to go and do what a bear does in the woods very shortly. And then we'll start preparing that eel. The first thing I do when I process an eel is hang him up in a tree. Then I get a really nice sharp knife and I cut around the back of his head, just below where his pectoral fins come out. You don't want to cut him in half, you just want to cut all the way around the skin. Then for this one, what I'll do is I'll cut down his dorsal line and we want to part that skin all the way down just on one side of his body and then we get the knife and put it under the skin like so we want to we want to tear that skin off and what comes in really handy for this job is a little pair of pliers you can use big pliers but I've only brought my little ones there we go that's it okay we'll do the other side as well if it tears into the meat you need to cut a little bit more, get it started, and then just alternate side to side. And you can tell there's almost a second skin here. That's the outside skin, and we want to leave that there. So just do one side, and then the other side. And without pliers, this job is almost impossible. And when we get down to the last uh, 10, 15 percent, it's probably not worth continuing because there's, there's like this much thickness of meat in his tail. So after his skin, we'll get the knife and we'll cut fillets off him. Now I haven't gutted him, so I'm going to try and stay away from his stomach cavity a bit. They do have quite a few bones in their body. You can see I'm just reaching the stomach cavity, but I'm not cutting into the, the stomach contents. Beautiful, nice eel fillets, nice and clean just the way we want. And while we're here, I'll just cut them in half. Make them a little bit more manageable. And the final step before cooking, we get some salt and give it a nice heavy sprinkle. We don't want the fish fillets covered, but we definitely want like a at least a teaspoon on each each piece. We'll rest that meat for a little while and we'll do it top to bottom. So we just layer it with the, like just the fillet side up. 
just like that. That way it's back to front, back to front, back to front. Pop it in a little plastic bag, squeeze the air out of it, and just leave that for half an hour would be better. And I'll go pack up the hammock. I've already packed the hammock and the pillow up. Oh, hang on, there's my laundry. <laughs> I always hang my boots up high so that spiders and snakes don't go crawling in them. And I don't often show you guys this. This is this just a like a one inch, actually it might even be a 20 mil, 20 mil strap, so I don't damage trees. And then it's just a loop to loop system where I just use a, a stick I find in the forest. And that, that's how easy it comes undone. So make sure to take these with me. And that's the same on the other side. Very simple. Cool. If you want to check it out, um, Hennessy is probably the best company to get a hammock from. I made this one myself. I'm not sponsored by them, but yeah, they do have a good product. So there it is, all packed up, ready to go. What I need is a few branches, and I believe this is native nutmeg. So we use it. Green branches, so that we can cook the fish. Yeah, that's nutmeg. Now, I'm using nutmeg, one, because I know it's not toxic, and two, it may give me a nice flavour. I doubt it, but it may. <laughs> that fire is perfect. You can tell the salt is doing its job because there's moisture in the bag. So salt flavours fish, but it also draws out a bit of moisture. Ooh, that's a nice temperature. That is good. So you want to be careful with that. I'll do it two that way and two the other way. You don't want to smoke fish fast and hot. You want it like, yeah, really, really quite mild. Uh, that still is hot, but you don't want to like burn the fish or brown it really hard. You want it just to heat through with the smoke coming onto it. And I tell you what, it might be, I think it's 6.30 in the morning, but having a flannelette shirt on, it's just too hot. I've actually got beads of sweat dripping down me. And the temperature last night, I'd say it didn't get below 20 degrees Celsius, which is perfect. As the fish gets to the final stages of smoking, I didn't put much salt on before. Well, I didn't leave it for very long, so I'm just going to put another sprinkle of salt just over the, the whole lot, just a little bit. They are starting to look exceptionally good. I like it when they go that really, really dark color. And you can see the oil on the skin there. Do not get rid of that oil. That is the best part. Here goes, moment of truth. Mmm. <laughs> Good amount of salt. Yeah. There's a good smoke flavor as well. Mm. Sometimes in the rainforest, you've got to watch out. The timber you use, if it's really soft, it, it gives it like an acrid taste. Mm. Oh, this is this is great. Try a bit of that oily skin. Oh yes, yep. I think our bodies or tongues or, or our system is made to really appreciate omega-3 and omega-6 oils. And I reckon there's some of that in here. Mm. If you ever do that, do not get rid of this skin. That skin, the inside skin, not the outside skin. The outside skin on these eels is pretty horrid. But the inside skin, mm, that is where it's at. Mm. Like I said, guys, oh, that oil. Mm. Mm. That oil is just delicious. I'm going to finish my breakfast. But if you've never tried eel, maybe don't do it like this first. Go to a Japanese restaurant and have smoked eel. They do it quite nice. Although, I reckon I prefer mine better. Mm. 
Thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified of my new videos. I do them every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and people who've donated through PayPal. If you want to see more right now, click the, uh, the links above. Catch you next time.